Good evening, good evening, folks. Thank you for jumping on the stream tonight to another stream of uh, Let's Talk About It Now. Just a little housekeeping as you come into the building for all my YouTube subscribers. Please do me the kindness of hitting the subscribe button, the share button, and also adding any questions or comments that you may have in the chat room. Shout out to all of my Facebook group members. Thank you for getting on the stream as well tonight. Any questions or comments that you may have in this particular topic, as this may be a jarring or triggering uh, subject, as I intend to basically share and give tribute to uh, a man who, in a lot of ways, was, contra was controversial. Controversial to women in general and black women in particular as it relates to the talking points that were had, as it relates to relationships, outcomes, expectations. Um, you've heard me in my earlier streams, I've I dealt very deep, seriously with these kind of subjects and talking points, of which I 100% agree with 98% of them. And I believe most, uh, I believe most women, and I believe most black women in particular would also agree if they would give themselves the time to remove their emotions from the subject, remove their feelings from the talking point, and just simply listen to what Mr. Kevin Samuels was trying to say, you know? Um, I will say this, that for over 50 years, women in general, black women in particular, had the privilege of speaking boldly in the public about what they wanted, what they expected, as it related to the men that they say they wanted. They were allowed to do this, and I will tell you this, they were greatly applauded in doing so. They made memes, songs, that indicated what women wanted. We had songs like, uh, I don't want no scrubs. Uh, your best friend sitting on your sitting on the passenger side of your best friend's ride trying to holler at me many of you remember that song and there were many other songs no love without romance many many different songs indicated what men what women wanted as related to the men that they say they wanted and these things went on over and over for years and years there were movies made Many movies that were made where men were depicted in a weak standpoint, where they were disrespected verbally in the movies, and there was never any pushback. And I, what I'd like to say to uh, ladies, is it all right for a man to indicate what he wants? I'm not talking about pookie. I'm not talking about nug nug. I'm not talking about these individuals who are not even worthy of calling themselves men i'm not talking about them no we have a lot of males but i'm not talking about males i'm talking about actual men and more importantly the men that you say you want are they allowed to describe or to indicate the kind of women that they say they want and before i go any further shout out to all of you that uh got on the stream tonight shout out to abdul for getting on the stream thank you for getting on the stream tonight shout out to gail shout out to kwan shout out to camille shabazz thank you my brother for getting on the stream tonight shout out to uh Dwayne for getting on the stream tonight and f if i didn't call your name a uh, family charge it to my uh, head and not to my heart i absolutely appreciate your participation but i want to get into this because here is a young here's a man who uh for the most part was misunderstood i will tell you he was misunderstood completely misunderstood and uh i know many of you ladies you didn't like his approach you didn't like how he said a thing well he could have said it better he could have said it nicer he could have smiled when he said it and uh i'm a firm believer that no matter how he said it i don't believe he would have got the the uh favorable reaction not from the modern woman not today I've done streams in the past where I talked about how this whole mindset has developed. It developed as a result, for the most part, through the feminist movement. 
The feminist movement has done more to destroy women in general, black women in particular, as it relates to relationships, family, the need for a man in the home, and more importantly, passing the culture forward. See, because in times past, Big Mama and women of old, they were simply made of better stuff. They weren't influenced by this modern mindset that tells women, I don't need no man. I don't need a man at all. I can do it all by myself. Yet in spite of that ridiculous statement, the whole world has been built, developed, maintained by men. So the power grids are maintained by men. The bridges, the tunnels, they were built, manufactured by men. The road systems were built and they are maintained by men. Cars that you drive were built, manufactured at the hands of men. Everything that you need to survive was, felt, was maintained, manufactured, and developed at the hands of men. And I know some of you may say, well, women had something to do with that. And no doubt, you had something to do with it. But the hard work, and I mean the life-threatening work, to bring these developments into existence, these inventions into existence, were done at the hands of men, who many of whom lost their lives in the process, only to find today the level of disrespect and the low level of disrespect as it relates to men in general, black women in particular, black men in particular, as it relates to our women. See, because here's the thing. What did Kevin Samuels literally talk about? What was his talking point? While many women and black women in particular found his talking points offensive, they found him rude. They found him to be rude. Uh, he doesn't have to teach like that. And uh, shout out to Michelle Ship. I appreciate you with your insightful comments today. I really do appreciate uh, your comments and I respect your comments. I do. And uh, continue to comment as you feel uh, necessary to do so. Because that's what gets the conversation going. That's, what, that's, that's the reason why the conversation is being had. It's for those that are not afraid to give their opinion. I accept opinions. But remember, opinions are just that. Opinions are subjective. Opinions are not objective. All of what I talk about in my talking points are objective standpoints. This is information that can be verified. Factual information that can be verified. See, subjective standpoints are based on someone's opinion. Supposition. Feelings. And one thing about a feeling and one thing about an assumption is that it becomes a my truth scenario and you know today you hear a lot of individuals talking about well that's my truth well I'll be honest with you nobody really cares about your truth because see your truth is just that yours it can't be verified it can't be backed by any sound facts it's a feeling you know and all too often feelings if if they're had in large numbers, they're assumed to be fact. They're assumed to be fact. So what did Kevin Samuels talk about that got women so upset, black women in particular? He said you're in the danger zone between the ages of, uh, at 27, you hit the danger zone. What does the danger zone mean? He said the danger zone is the ages between 27 and 35. Those are the ages to where you reach what's called or you're reaching what's called geriatric pregnancy at 35. Why is that important? Why is 35 a dangerous area to reach? And why is it called the danger zone? Anything that's labeled as dangerous or danger, that's a warning sign. It's telling you to gird up your loins, get prepared, right? It's telling you to exercise a sense of urgency so from 27 to 35 that's the age area where you need to be exercising a sense of urgency 
because now at 35 you've reached what's called again geriatric pregnancy that's when you're physically in danger of having a child if you should decide to have one but what does this decide what does this society teach young women they teach you at an early age and it's handed down to your mothers of which I said and you've heard me say in many other streams that 85% of households are headed by a single parent all right if that's the case and it is that's verified information from blackdemographics.com by black people for black people this is verified verifiable information that 85% of households are headed by a single parent in the black community okay well if that's true and it is then why would you teach your daughter in the early years in her most her most valuable years to go get an education girl focus on yourself girl focus on yourself don't pay attention to the idea of even having a husband just focus on yourself go get your education get your get the bag go after the bag that's the new term today go after the bag okay well what you find yourself is in a trick bag by the time you get into your mid 30s because now after you've done wait after you after you're done wasting all of your most precious years with education and losing time now you're ready to settle down and I'll tell you something if you ask any young woman between the ages of 20 and 25 about politics they can't tell you anything about it you ask them anything about the from the age of 20 to 25 about uh, money marketing or money management they can't have that conversation with you these conversations and these subjects become very important to most women when their looks begin to decline follow me don't get triggered ladies this is when this conversation becomes most important when their looks begin to decline that's when all of a sudden sales becomes important different things become important that should have become important at the earlier years of their life now relationships even become become a subject of a discussion whereas early in the earlier years it wasn't a subject of discussion whatsoever how does this hurt a young black woman how does this hurt women in general I'll tell you how because here's here's the problem what what strengthens and makes solid any any community its families its marriages husband wives children that's what makes a strong community what breaks down the community when you break down those three elements when you make women believe that they're self-sufficient by themselves and alone by themselves unprotected from the presence of a man there to protect them in the middle of the night when you hear that thump in the middle of the night with a man present who would you expect to go downstairs to risk his life to protect you you'd expect him to do it right you'd expect him to go down there and do it right but if you're left alone then that means you'd have to go down there and find out what that noise was downstairs and I will tell you like I've said in many streams before in the past please listen to me the most vulnerable woman on the planet is an unprotected woman on the planet what was Kevin Samuel's whole focus okay you didn't like the way he said it you didn't like the tone he used well you know what we all had parents that loved us right and they gave us great advice many of us that had good parents we didn't always like the tone I know I didn't we didn't always like the way our mother said things we certainly didn't like the way our fathers said things but when we when we peel back the layers today in our older years we can hear what was being said clearly and not necessarily how it was said. I believe if we could put our feelings aside and just hear what he was trying to do, 
His whole objective was to bring families back together. That's all it was really all about. And it was to give women in general, black women in particular, realistic expectations as it related to the sexual marketplace. Now you say, what do you mean by the sexual marketplace? Okay, well, let's look at a marketplace. A marketplace from a physical standpoint is where things are sold, right? Okay. Each thing in that sexual marketplace has a value. That value is usually based on a few different things. It's based on use. It's based on age. It's based on quality. That's what's that's what things in the sexual mark in the physical marketplace is based on. So how is it based on in the sexual marketplace? If a woman is single and she has children, is her value the same on the sexual marketplace as a woman who's single and childless? Just think, don't get triggered, just think. Is it the same? It can't be the same. To the individual coming into the marketplace looking for a wife, is he looking for the wife who has children already, having been in the presence of someone else already before his arrival, him having no children of his own? I want you to think. Him having no children of his own. Does he see you on the same value level in the sexual marketplace as he sees the young woman over here who's single and childless? It's common sense. It's common sense. Is it the fault of the man who does not want to choose the woman who has children already? as opposed to choosing the woman who has no children at all. Is it his fault for making that choice? No. That would be an unfair assessment. Is it his fault on the sexual marketplace if 85% of our women, black women in particular, are overweight and of that same number considered obese? Is it his fault on the sexual marketplace in looking for a wife of his choosing that he looks for the wife who's not obese who's not overweight and single and childless is it his fault if he chooses that wife and not choose the wife of the latter example is it his fault or does he have a right to make that choice based on the sexual marketplace next example what gains value over time and use? This is one of the talking points that Kevin Samuels made that triggered so many women across the country. Many women understood it. Many women got the message, but so many women misunderstood it. And I don't believe they truly misunderstood it. I just think it was such a punch. The reality of the statement was such a punch. It contradicted the narrative that the society teaches women, and I'll be honest with you, lies to the modern woman, it seems to me in this modern age, they would rather hear the lie than to hear the truth. And if the truth is spoken, or if in particular a black man has the audacity to say it, they would rather hear the lie. What is the lie? What is the narrative? that's being spoken to women in general, black women in particular. I'll give you a few examples that we can see and that we hear right now today. We have a very wealthy, famous entertainer by the name of Lizzo, very beautiful sister, very extremely dangerously, dangerously obese. Oh yeah. Now, you know what? Here's what the narrative would tell you to say by me making that statement. Oh, he's fat shaming. That's what he's doing. See, 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 see. He's fat shaming. No, he's not fat shaming. Not at all. Not especially when the U.S. Health Department says that obesity brings about a multitude of illnesses, even to the point of death. 
Why isn't the U.S. Health Department being called fat shaming when they make those assertions? After medical doctors and medical professionals have already proven that will, it will cause you to potentially lose your life. But see, in this modern age, with this narrative that tells women the lie that they would rather hear as opposed to the truth, when an individual like Kevin Samuel steps up on the scene again with the audacity and the boldness to speak the truth based from a subjective standpoint and not from an, ob an objective standpoint, all verifiable facts, not coming from his own personal opinion, but coming from the uh, blackdemographics.com, by black people for black people, the U.S. Census Bureau, the, the United States Health Department. And the likes of organizations and platforms like that who go about their life work of getting and gathering this kind of information to make it available to the general public for the benefit of the general public. Then when someone comes to narrate it, the only argument is, I don't like the way he said that. Really? But did you like what he said? Maybe not. Because you got lost in the message by how he said it. And I don't like his tone. But see, that's childish behavior. That's the way we used to act with our parents when we knew we did something wrong. And they brought it to our attention and called us out. I don't like the way mommy said that to me. But did you do it? That's the question. Or are you guilty of what you're being told? Are you guilty of what you're being uh, accused of? If all of our marriages in this country are dissolved at 85% by black women. Men are not leaving the relationships. This is another talking point that Mr. Kevin Samuels talked about. All objective standpoints, not subjective standpoints, ladies. These are, this is verifiable information. This is based on facts, data, and statistics, not opinions, not my truth. It's not, it's not coming from a my truth standpoint. 85% of all marriages are dissolved and called off by way of divorce at the hands of black women. 54% of all black men in this country are single and childless. 54%. And yet 85% of households are headed by a black woman. You're looking at 34% of black men that are basically single with children. Doing the math, you're talking about 16% of black men that are fathering 85% of all of the single parent homes. That's clear indication, clear indication that it's not an issue where black men are concerned. The issue is that there are no wives. This is the talking point that Mr. Kevin Samuels drove home consistently while so many women, black women in particular, became triggered, logged off, didn't want to hear what he had to say. I'm sure many are logging off on this stream tonight. The talking points won't change, nor will the objective standpoints of the talking points be, uh, be nullified. These are facts. Two plus two still is four. You accept the two or the four, it's going to be the same. What do we do about it? What do we do about it? What do we do about getting the black community back in place as it relates to family and family structure? I'm glad you asked. The best way to get us back in terms of family and family structure is by allowing the men that you say you want to speak to you and speak to, to you without pushback, with simply trying to understand. Not listen to respond, but listen to understand. Listen to understand. Understand what? What do the men that you say you want not the ones you say you don't want. We got some brothers out here that 
shouldn't even be having a conversation about a wife or a girlfriend. You know, I, I, I talked about the pookies and the nug nugs. You know, we're not talking about them. Some of them shouldn't even be having this conversation. They need to get their stuff together before they have that conversation. Because to look at a female, you're looking at a responsibility. You're not looking at sex at all. But the, here's the saddest part about it. Most women, black women in particular, you don't see yourself as a responsibility. That's the saddest part. Because if you did, I believe as a whole, as a community, the, the whole idea and the whole concept of marriage and relationship would be taken much more seriously. See, understand this. If you can get attention from a man, that does not mean he'll keep you. I said this so many times. Mr. Kevin Samuels drove this point home all the time. Because you can, you can solicit sexual attention from a man does not mean he will keep you. R. Kelly made a whole album, I made a whole song where he talked about, you remind me of my Jeep. Women didn't give R. Kelly pushback by using a physical thing to describe them. And this was long before Kevin Samuels. You remind me of my Jeep. I want to ride. Something like my car. You know the song. But R. Kelly made a whole album and it went platinum. And most of the purchasers of that album were women. Yet, when a conversation comes up like this, it gets most pushback. In fact, even upon the death of Kevin Samuels, sadly, black women in particular celebrated the death of the man. When all he tried to do was give you the advice your father should have gave you a long time ago. You wouldn't have liked if your father gave you the advice. But since most of us black men have not heard what it was like or what they needed to do from a realistic standpoint about being a man or being a father whatsoever. It was always defined by what was between our legs and we know that's a lie. But black women in particular were also given bad advice and when that bad advice was brought back to them as it relates to how they behave and how they act in the home and amongst their own men in terms of re uh, respect or disrespect, the pushback and the hatred and the vitriol was at an all time high. One young lady said to me, she said, Kevin Samuels, he always talked about black women, but he never gave men any pushback about their behavior. That's a lie. See, I can always tell if someone makes that statement, they haven't followed Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels spent three years straight talking to men directly. And if you think he's been hard, you think he was being hard on women, you should have heard his, uh, his commentary where he was talking to men for three years. It was very hard and very direct and very raw. He told the truth the way it should have been told if you're talking to grown men, no doubt. So he covered both sides of that spectrum. Why was the pushback so great when he started talking to black women? Because black women have already sold themselves for the most part to the narrative of what was not even in, was not even directed to you. Understand that the feminist movement wasn't for you, sister. The feminist movement never had anything to do with you. When the seven, when the, when the feminist movement took root, most of us were still under segregation. We were still under segregation. That was directed towards white women who felt they were being oppressed by their own white men. Mind you, they had all the privilege and the leverage in this country, not you. Not you. The whole feminist movement practically infiltrated the civil rights movement. Basically eclipsed the civil rights movement. And black women found it more uh, benefiting to themselves to walk away from their own black man for the sake of benefits coming from government. This was the trick. Black men didn't leave their homes. Black men didn't walk out on black women. It was a system put in place to make black women feel they didn't need a man in the home. And that's why today public programs require the man to be out of the house 
for you to get even benefit for you to get any benefits from government and you know that i'm right you know that i'm right but this is what you asked for this is what you accepted and this is what you sold yourself to and today it's morphed into something much greater it's a much bigger monster than it used to be oh it's a much bigger monster today no doubt because now they've got all kinds of programs all kinds of programs and benefits that are targeted towards women to the negate of your own man to the negation of your own man and if you look at the way the society is going if you've been paying attention there's a huge push and a huge campaign and drive to feminize black men oh you know i'm right we got your little nazis and we got the image of that individual you saw me put on the group today that picture you know this exists and you know this is prevalent and you know this is popularized and you know this is promoted but these are black men and many of our women you have sons you think you have influence over teaching them how to become a man huh good luck with that because like i said 85 percent of all marriages are dissolved at the hands of black women you're ending your own relationships and choosing to be single i know you got your stories and your anecdotal situations as to why you made that decision i know in most cases it's always something he did i know i know again like i've said in other streams accountability is like kryptonite with the modern woman and black women in particular to take any accountability whatsoever as to what part we play into the dissolving or destruction of any of our relationships is almost non-existent almost non-existent and until we get to a place where accountability becomes an acceptable perspective we're going to always have this situation going on and what does the society desire to do between us their desire is to create a gender war between black women and black men. And if you are foolish enough to close your eyes and allow that to happen, <laughs> wow, then there'll be a whole lot of women going forward into the future who will in fact, at the words of Mr. Kevin Samuels, die alone. That's a fact. Tent farms, and if you don't believe this, tent farms of single women alone with children unprotected by the presence of a man are going up all over California, tent farms all over California and many other states in this country. Oh no, the media doesn't talk about it much because they don't like to show women in a vulnerable position by media. No. They like to keep this image that women are doing well. But let me tell you something. They have to paint that narrative. It's so much money involved, ladies. So much money is involved in keeping you believing like this because the biggest part of the spending power in this country is had at the hands of women. Men don't spend money like women spend money. No, not at all. It was financially expedient to get you to believe that you were fine by yourself that all you needed was to get your education and to uh, uh, develop hundreds and thousands of dollars worth of student loan debt and to run the cock carousel until you could run it no more only to find yourself up in your middle age by yourself and alone and perhaps with one or two children now considering the serious of relationship that was by design that was by design and then they developed programs that would accommodate that delusion and so many of us have fell victim to that and that's why our communities look exactly the way it looks right to this day I don't care what city what state what town you live in you don't walk down the street and see marriage couple married couples not at all 
You don't see married couples. Young people are not in relationships the way we used to be in relationships. There is no courtships anymore now. Nah, there's no courtships. There's no wine and dine and courting and meet the parents of the young lady that you're interested in now. No, there's none of that. It's straight to the bedroom. Straight to the bedroom. And after that, straight to the maternity ward. But no marriages whatsoever. Whatsoever. And here's the thing. The passing down of the culture, as you heard me mention earlier, has always been the responsibility of women. Why? Because the men were out in the field killing the bear, tackling the wolf, and bringing the meat home to the family. It was the women who were at home teaching the principles, the mores, the the ideas and ideals of womanhood and how to be a wife and how to deal with home and how to take care of home and children and how to care for her husband and look after her husband and be a help meet to her husband. This is what was passed down by the women. But that's when Big Mama was in her 60s, 70s. Big Mama today is 30 and 35. She's just as ignorant as the younger generation that she's trying to teach. And there's nothing in her to teach them. The wisdom is gone. It's been bought up, sold, and dissolved by this modern mentality under the form of feminism and many other uh, poisonous additives. And if many of you ladies that hear this stream, if you are honest with yourself, you know I'm correct. You've lost control of your daughters today. You've lost control of your nieces today. And many of you have lost control of yourself today. And the outcomes remain. The outcomes remain. There's no one checking to marry you, but they're checking to date you. There's no one checking to date marry your daughters, but they're checking to date them. There's no one checking to marry your nieces, but they're, they're checking to date them. And if you've heard any of my previous streams and if you've been following me over the last eight to nine months, you know I described what dating means. Dating is just a prelude to sex. It's not what it used to mean. See, in times past, dating was a situation where you sat across the table and you outlined the different characteristics, personalities, and traits of each other to figure out if in fact this was wife material or if in fact this man was marriage minded, but not today. No, not today at all. Today is all a prelude to sex. All of it is a prelude to sex. And if sex is what's on the table and not marriage, then we know what goes along with sex. Potentially children. Now, once the outcomes are unfavorable, unfavorable for you, then you turn the behavior that you allowed in on the man that you chose. You've heard me say in other streams, ladies, men determine relationships and marriage. This is what men determine by nature. You determine access to your body and childbirth by nature. This is what you determine. What does that mean? That means if you don't determine or if you don't give access to your body, he can't take it. He can't have it. And if you have found yourself with child you still have a choice as to whether you're going to carry to full term now don't get me wrong and don't misunderstand me i'm not promoting abortion whatsoever even though this country supports supports it and even though many of you ladies are fighting like hell to make it a right that people that women have instead of making it a right and a priority to simply keep your legs closed. See, it's harder to make that a priority than it is to simply argue about the right to abort a child. 
after you've been irresponsible. Oh yeah, I said it. I said it. After being irresponsible, you want to have a you want to fight over the right to destroy what was produced from irresponsible behavior, but not fight for being responsible and simply keeping your legs closed. This is what you're teaching your daughters though. This is what I'm saying. Here's the breakdown in community. This is the breakdown in community. We have already been destroyed. Isn't it obvious? Isn't it obvious? This is not a Charles Chambliss problem. No. This is not a Kevin Samuels issue. He's not the uh, the battering ram of the target of ridicule and uh, attack because he said the statements and he mentioned what was absolute actual fact. Nor am I the attack uh, dummy by stating the same facts. The saddest part is that the facts are there and women and black women in particular and even some silly simp black men and men in general are also fighting and pushing back on talking points like this you know you got to be a fool when the clear evidence is right before our, our eyes that there is a serious problem as it relates to relationships as it relates to community breakdown as it relates to feminizing of our men as it relates to the feminizing of our young boys, as it relates to the masculine gender and nature of our young girls who are now becoming men while the boys are becoming women. It is clear and obvious that there is a breakdown in the community structure while we yet sit with our hands covering our eyes and our fingers in our ears going along to get along, refusing to say what needs to be said, refusing to speak up on subjects that need to be spoken up to to protect the status quo. Why did we live? Why did our leaders fight, bleed and die? For what? For this? For this, is this what we have become in 2023 and still climbing? Is this what we've become? This go along to get along generation of people that have no fight in them whatsoever. No pushback on the subjects that need to be pushed back. Instead, we attack the messenger of a subject that we know damn well is actual fact because we can see it right before our own eyes. Is this what we've become today? Have we decided to make the messenger the scapegoat for our own ignorance? Oh no, it wasn't Mr. Kevin Samuel's fault. Not at all. He said nothing wrong. You may not have liked his tone. You may not have liked how he said it. Yeah, well, get over it because the facts still remain. He came from a objective standpoint and not from a subjective standpoint which is what society loves to push as the narrative opinions suppositions feelings that never helped that never changed anything never it never has so what do i what is my objective tonight to give a perspective on mr kevin samuels who the whole society who has benefited in one way or the other. If he rubbed your feathers the wrong way, that means you still are affected. And I am a firm believer that if you take a bucket of rocks and you throw them over a fence, you don't have to worry yourself about how many dogs are on the other side. Just, just lend your ear close to the fence and you'll find out which dog got hit by who makes the loudest noise. The truth hurts, the truth is uncomfortable, but it must be had, and it must be said. It's the largest casualty in the war between truth and falsehood. The truth always takes the highest casualty. The truth always takes the highest casualty, no matter who says it. And I'm a firm believer also, again, while women in general, black women in particular, love to say they want the truth. Uh, just don't lie to me. Lying has become a comfortable position to be in. For many women 
and many of our women in particular don't tell me the truth give me smooth words tickle my ear tell me what i want to hear but don't tell me the truth even though the evidence is clear right in front of me in my own family in my own community at my own church at my own mosque wherever you worship whatever organization you're a part of the disproportionate number of those that are married and in uh healthy relationships it's almost null and void almost null and void almost null and void so tribute to Mr. Kevin Samuels and uh, may his legacy be left alive and intact in a healthy way that that way the message can be heard by mature ears long enough to really understand exactly what he was saying for those of you that think it was his opinion and for those of you that think it's mine I left the links in the description you go do the research yourself if you dare do the research if you dare and you will come back finding out that everything that was said is factual information as per blackdemographics.com the US Census Bureau and the United States Health Department this is not a Charles Chambliss dialogue and it's certainly not a Kevin Samuels concoction these talking points no no not at all now I will give you I will tell you this there are some who would love to use these talking points in a negative way yes and for you ladies who believe that that's the case in some cases I'm going to agree with you there because there are some there are some really simple minded individuals who have these talking points and they use it to hurt they truly do use it to hurt but I'm going to tell you this not all so you have to listen with a critical ear Kevin Samuels wasn't that one he wasn't that one he had a beautiful mother and he had a beautiful daughter he did not hate women no he wasn't a misogynist <laughs> A misogynist is a man who hates women. He's not. He wasn't a misogynist, you know. Um, because he spoke talking points that went against the posit the the uh, the uh, the current popular narrative that women are being told in this particular society does not mean he hated women. You got to understand that you're being manipulated and used to think a specific way to keep your family structure broken down to dust without doubt so salute to mr kevin samuels rest in peace condolences again it's been just a few months may the 5th of last year is when he uh passed away so for his family members they may hear this stream again my condolences still go out to you my condolences still go out to his daughter who will never see her father again you know and all he tried to do was something positive to bring our relationships and our communities back together as a cohesive family structure that it used to look like prior to the feminist movement and prior to us being ripped apart through social programs and I thank all of you for getting on the stream tonight again salute to Mr. Kevin Roshan Samuels who died May the 5th, 2022. Salute to all of you that got on the stream tonight. Shout out Dwayne again. Shout out to Dwayne. Glad to see you on the stream, man. And uh, shout out to Camille Shabazz. Hey, guys, listen. I mentioned brother Camille Shabazz. Very good brother, good friend of mine for many, 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 many years has an amazing book you can pick it up on amazon it's called the macadine university pick that book up it's for young men uh pick that book up it's it's directed at men fantastic book get it um we need more information like that and guys we need more brothers that have the wherewithal to speak truth 
to the problems that affect us specifically. We need that. There's too many narratives out here about us that's negative, and we need somebody that's willing to speak the truth and talk some talk and talk some, have some conversations and have the courage to do so. You know, that can take us to a different level. You know, that way we can be better fathers. We can be better husbands. We can be better community leaders. We can be better. You know, we got to start changing the story that's being told about black men and that many women and our women in particular are being fooled by the lie. That way we can help change and turn this thing all the way around. So again, go to Amazon, pick this book up, Macadine University by brother Camille Shabazz. Shout out to, uh, shout out to you brother for getting on the stream. Thank you for supporting the stream. And again, for all my YouTube uh, subscribers, I thank you all for all my new YouTube subscribers. Again, coming into the building, show your support. Hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, and uh, I'll do my best to keep great content coming to you as well. With that being said, have a fantastic evening. Have a fantastic and positive day tomorrow. I am your host, Charles Chambers, another episode of Let's Talk About It Now. With that being said, we are out. Good night, folks. Have a good night, folks.